All right. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go through the uh, process of um, calculating the uh, alpha and beta and also R square here. Uh, so let's go through one example. And hopefully this will give a bad idea that how the machine learning models are working, uh, especially for the uh, simple linear machine learning models. Uh, so here we are following the uh, the OLS, uh, ordinary list square model, so OLS, that we just talked in the previous lecture. So first we bring our data. Uh, so we have a bunch of data. Uh, so where we have the X, which is the area, and we have the Y, which is uh, is the price, and we have some records. So remember that in machine learning, so X and Y price and also area are called features. And price is our label, okay, uh, because that is a target that we want to predict. And the area is just a, a common feature, and we only has we only have one feature. And um, those data are called training data. So because we know the right answers and uh, the, which are the price, so we want to find out the best alpha and the beta. So the price will equals alpha plus beta times area. Okay. So we, we want to find out the best alpha and the beta so that can minimize the errors that uh, uh, find out a simple linear uh, uh, line that between price and also the area. So first, once we have price and also area, so something we can do very easily is that we can calculate the correlation between x and y. Uh, we can calculate the mean value of x, uh, mean value of y, standard deviation of x, and also standard, devi standard deviation of y. So those are can be calculated directly from price and loss area. And once we have those ones, and if you remember that in OLS, so those will be enough to find out alpha and beta. So those will be sufficient to calculate alpha and beta. So it's pretty simple in li simple linear relationship, like simple linear uh, regression model. So, so now we have the model. And the next, we can calculate the predicted price. Okay, so remember that alpha and the beta are the models. So we bring this area uh, to, to this model, and that will give us a predicted price. And we bring this value to that model, and that will give us another predicted price. Okay, so we will have those predicted price. And those predict price, and we can compare the predict price against the real price. So we all have this error. So we um, calculate the predict price against the price, and we have those errors. Okay, so those errors are kind of the mistakes that the model have. Um, because some errors can be uh, positive, and some errors can be negative. So tomorrow's accuracies, we want the squared errors, so we then have the squared errors. Um, we also have the mean of the price, and we use price to uh, minus the mean of the price, so we have the price minus mean, so that is this column. Once we have that one, we have the squared of the mean minus price, squared of the mean minus of price. Okay, so that so then we are ready. Um, so we have some of the squared errors. We, we can also count the variance of the y. Um, in this case, is the price. We also have the sum of the squared mean minus uh, price minus mean of the price, and we have this one, which is actually uh, so sum of squared y minus mean divided by n. So number of the records. So once we have those variables. And we can calculate the R square. So the R square in this one, so using the first definition, we can calculate that one. We can get the R square uh, based on those variables. Um, and if you remember that uh, for simple linear re regression, R square also equals the square of the correlation. So uh, we can also calculate the square of the correlation. 
So that is this one. So both will give we will give us the same value. So we can see in either way that we have the same R squares. All right. So now we have the predictive models. So we have the we have the alpha and also we have the beta. And we also know the R square. Okay, so in either way, so by using the definition from OLS or by using the definition of that for simple linear regression, it also equals square correlations. We have the same R square. So the now the model is like this. So for price, house price, it equals this value plus this value times area. So for example, if your house that has a 2,000 square feet, you can just replace that one, uh, introduce that one to this variable, and uh, after this calculation, and uh, you will have your predicted price. Okay, so you will have your predicted price. So now you can use this model to make predictions. And how accuracy will be our prediction? So the, the R square is only 25%, 23%. So it can only explain 23 variation of the price, or oh, it's, it's not that good, I would say. So 23% of R square is, is pretty low. Okay, so the, this model is not that good. So even you can have a predict price, but the predict price may not be that reliable. Okay, because R square is very, very low. Uh, so if we put that model to on the visualization, so we can see uh, those yellow dots are the original data or the training data that we have. Okay, uh, so we have the, the training data that we have, and based on the training data, we find out the model. So that is this straight line because we are using simple linear regression model. So that is based on alpha and beta. So we have this green straight line. And the dots on those green straight lines are those predicted values. So the dots on those are the predict values. So for example, for this point, we can see the real price is this, and the predict price is this for the house that of this size. And so that is the error. Okay. So sometimes you have the positive errors, sometimes you have negative errors. Okay. So that means sometimes you predict higher. Then the act and then the real price, and sometimes it predict lower than the real price. Okay, so that is the model that we get. So that is the uh, simple linear regression model. So those are the parameters, and also this is R square by using OLS. Okay. Uh, if you remember that OLS is just one approach to find out the parameters. And there is a second approach. Okay, the second approach to find out the best parameters of a single uh, linear regression model is called maximal likelihood estimation. Okay, so that is a second approach. Uh, it is different from OLS. However, they should give you the same similar result. They should give you the similar result. So that is using the MLE, so maximal likelihood estimation. So the idea of this model is slightly different, and we are not going to go to the details about the model, but just let you know that we do have a second approach to estimate the parameters of the single uh, linear regression model. So that's called max maximal likelihood estimate. So the idea is that we're, we're going to use a likelihood function to indicate that how likely the observed sample is a function of some possible parameter values. And then we want to maximize the likelihood of function, okay? So that we want to determine the parameters that are the most likely to produce those observed data. Okay, are most likely to produce the observed data. So you, you can see that the, the idea is different from OLS, uh, 
OLS. So MLE is kind of find out the parameters that has the highest likelihood to generate those sample points or the data. So compared to OLS, MLE is recommended for larger sample size. Okay. And it is applicable to most models and also different type of data. So OLE, OLS only apply for the simple linear regression model, but MLE can be used for many other models that we will talk in the future lectures and also apply to different type of data. Okay, different type of data. So for, for simple linear, for OLS, that only can apply for data which are numbers, but for MLE, you may also apply for the catabolic data or the other type of data and produce the most accurate or precise estimate. Okay, uh, so the idea is that, okay, so we have this sample, sample data, so we have those training data and we may have a different alpha and beta, so we have a lot of alpha and betas. So MLE will help us find out the alpha and the beta that are most likely to produce uh, this sample, this data, this training data. Okay, so that is the idea of the uh, MLE. Okay, uh, so just give you another, uh, introduce another way that we can estimate, we can get the parameters of the models. So MLE is the second one. The third one is the gradient descent. Okay, so that is the third one. So uh, we have we have spent two lectures talking about gradient descent, but how can we use that one for the uh, for the model um, estimations? Also, the idea is that we can use, we can also use gradient descent uh, for the simple linear regression models. So the simple linear regression model is like this. So y equals alpha. Uh, plus beta multiple um, times x. So then the error will equals this one. So y minus this prediction. Okay. So then we have a uh, we then we have an expression for the error. Error equals this one. Okay. And next. We will have the squared error. So squared error equals this formula. So that's the error square of the previous error uh, formula. So now we have the squared errors. So now we can apply the gradient descent. So the gradient descent is to find out the beta and those alpha that can minimize the squared error function. Okay, so we have a bunch of y, we have a bunch of x, and we want to find out the alpha and the beta that can minimize uh, the squared error. So now we can minimize this function to find that can minimize this function. Okay, so that is gradient descent. Okay, uh, so then we need to calculate the alpha partial derivative and also beta partial derivative. Okay, and we can ignore, I will ignore the, the other details. So the basic idea of the gradient descent is that we have the model and we convert the model into another function that we want to minimize the square. Okay, so minimize the square of uh, squared error. So minimize error of squared errors. So gradient descent can help us to, um, find out the parameters that can minimize the errors of our models. Okay, um, so if now we go back to the slides that we mentioned earlier, so, okay, so now hopefully this slide will make sense. So gradient descent or the uh, stochastic gradient descent, which one type of gradient descent is used to choose the parameters of the model that can minimize the errors. Okay, so hopefully now this sentence will make sense.